Tonight, we're learning the man accused of killing University of Utah student athlete Aaron Lowe has a long and in some cases violent criminal history. However, several charges and guilty pleas land him book and book behind bars for only a year. Fox 13's John Franke joins us live with a deeper look into Book's past and how he managed to avoid state prison. John. Well, hey guys, I researched Book and Book's court records and came away with all of these documents. There are some very violent details in here, but in every case, he was allowed to plead to a lesser charge. Today, I asked why. <laughs> We have a process. Uh, look, we take uh, violent crime very seriously. The office of Salt Lake County DA Sim Gill has prosecuted several cases involving Book M. Book. In 2019, he was charged with aggravated robbery for stealing $290. The indictment says he and another suspect pulled a gun and a knife and told the victim, give me all your money. The aggravated robbery charge was eventually dismissed. And one of the, the aggravated robbery was dropped to a, to a robbery. Why would that? My understanding is that there were some uh, issues that might have had some evidentiary issues with that. And, uh, and so, so at that time, the uh, prosecutor did a global resolution, as we would say, taking all of those cases as two second degree uh, robberies. In May of 2019, Book was charged with another robbery, this time for taking $300 from a victim who thought he was meeting Book to buy an iPhone. Later that year, he pleaded guilty to giving false information to a police officer. After pleading guilty, he was sentenced to a year in the county jail. Each judge is different. The process is there, what we follow. Uh, we. Like I said, uh, the, the prosecuting attorney uh, convicted him of two robberies. After being released, Book was arrested in November 2020 for having a gun illegally. The indictment says he was in a stolen car with a stolen handgun and he had ammo in his pocket. That charge, too, was dropped. There were uh, four individuals, but they could not decide whose gun it was. And so we couldn't meet our burden of proof. Uh, and uh, so the prosecution uh, did what uh, it, it needed to do, which was that we uh, uh, convicted him of something lesser. In that case, Book pleaded guilty to failing to stop at an officer's command. He was sentenced to 115 days in jail and released in March. Now the question is, with his past, should Book have been on the streets? I think that's a difficult, maybe a little complex question, especially here in Utah. I spoke with Chris Bertram, a retired deputy chief of Unified Police and an expert in criminal justice. We're trying to find a balance of, of justice in this state. He points to criminal justice reform that leans toward rehabilitation over incarceration for allowing someone like Book to be free after committing several crimes. We do have people that commit crimes uh, and it's uh, even serious crimes. And we are trying to avoid as a state trying to lock some of those people up until it becomes necessary. He adds charging documents don't always tell the whole story and there are valid reasons why prosecutors seek plea agreements. Now the focus is on the here and now as prosecutors build their murder case to get justice for Aaron Lowe. We follow the evidence and uh, we both prosecute and file charges based on the evidence that we have. And and the DA here is still screening the charges for Book's alleged involvement in Lowe's murder. Those charges have not yet been filed by state law. The DA has 72 hours after an arrest to file those charges or request an extension. Reporting live tonight in Salt Lake City, John Franke, Fox 13 News, Utah. John, thank you. Eight days after the tragic passing of Aaron Lowe, head coach Kyle Whittingham and the Utes have to try to get back to football this week as they prepare to face USC. Fox 13 sports reporter Andrea Urban simply asked Coach Witt how he's doing through all this. It's uh, challenging. It's, you know, you just, a million things go through your head and, and you just, you know, keep going over and over the, uh, you know, essentially the same thoughts. And, and uh, it, it uh, really uh, brought back Ties passing. I mean, it, it kind of all is wrapped into one now, and, and uh, so it's uh, been the most challenging year of my coaching career, hands down, without any question at all. Coach Wood, of course, was referring to Ty Jordan, Lowe's friend and teammate, who was shot and killed last December. As long as he's the coach, he says no one will wear number 22 in the program, the number both Lowe and Jordan wore and he'd like to see the number retired. 